Keep them willies turning. Ride. Woo, we're live. Barto, Sunday night, nine o'clock. I said, let's go live. You said, let's do it. Boom. And then you said, break out the brand new A bottle of Elijah Craig BP. Barrel proof, baby. Barrel proof. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? We're going to test it. it. Test it. Test it. Dummy style. Yeah, right. the, uh, we, we've got this one. We've got several bottlings of the ECBP. It's one of our favorites. And probably, I mean, it's really, it's one of the best bourbons that you can, yep. you have to look, yep. you have to hunt, you can find it. My favorite bourbon. I'm going to say it right now. This Here's is what I want to know. Why didn't that tag say bottle of boom, Scotch test dummies? I right. will <laughs> <laughs> be next year's. Yeah. Yeah, now, I have not opened mine yet. Bart opened his and poured it just so it start getting some air. And I thought, well, I'll open mine up on camera. Yep, you're opening it, man. The, well, I knew the sealant. You're going to need like a razor knife. No, I got it. Oh, look at you. Is there a little secret tab I'm not aware of? No, it's perforated. Oh, wow. I couldn't find it. I almost had to knot like a, like a caveman millennia ago just to try to get the plastic off. I brought out the scissors. Weak cork pop on that one. Oh, sorry. Here, can I read? Uh, 65.3% ABV. Did you mention that? No, I did not. And I've got, I've got my B517 here. I, I don't have the C. I think you've got two Cs, matter of fact. Yeah, well, one's yours if, as soon as you pay me for it. <laughs> got it. Will do. <laughs> <laughs> So the uh, B517 is 62.1% ABV. The A118 is 65.3. Do you know what the C is by chance? Oh, look, they're all coming in there pretty close. Yeah, they're all close. Oop. There we go. So look at that. You got a little, little outfit shot. You got some kind of cargo shorts on. I was almost afraid we were going to get plumber crap. <laughs> <laughs> uh 65.5 on uh c117 or c917 c c9 65.1 five so wow. six, this one's 65.3 yeah Kick <clears throat> let's give a few shout outs here let's see who all is tuning in mm. um, we had uh, quite a few people already on there waiting for us to go tom r was first i'm muting myself because i gotta bring up the chat box okay keep going Yep, I'll give a few shout outs here. William Slattery, Eric Waite, Cato, uh, Julia Photography's tuning in, hopefully on the men. She was involved in a little fender bender the other day. James Humphreys, DH Silve 2, who uh, titled Make America Pete It Again for us. Hillbilly's tuning in. Amy W., Duncan Harmsworth, John Post, V. Rich, Bird Dog 2017, Brian Schultz, Tam 3 Me. First time here. Yep, first time I've seen you, Tam 3 Me. Thanks for tuning in. Louis Sanchez, Whiskey Obsessed, George Kaplan, John Post, Tolve Thomas 12, Jason was, Coates, Richie was, D. I was muted, but I wanted to yell, bird dog, like that. And I was muted. And big dog. Bird okay. dog and big dog. Do it. Double dog is what I'm going to call it. Double dog. Uh, Chef PC is here. OJ for hire. Joe LaRue. Richard Blancas. LaRue. Mark Brown. Howdy, Mark. LaRue. Uh, whiskey Obsessed. I said, Shimon. Howdy, Shimon. Isn't LaRue like, like from... Uh... Karate Kid. Who? LaRue. Joe. Joe LaRue. See him the Karate know. Kid. I don't know why I'm getting LaRue on there. I don't know. I don't know. Have you watched any of those YouTube episodes of the Karate Kid? I, I watched the two free ones. Yeah. It's kind of an interesting spin they're doing. It is. I don't want to go into it too much for those that haven't watched and may watch. Go watch those. What's, what's the name of it? Cobra Kai? Cobra Kai. I heard like in one of the later episodes, I haven't seen it yet, but one of one of our coworkers did. He said the the old sensei even comes in. Oh, he says it's a LaRue. 
not oh, LaRusso. That's right, LaRusso. Danny, Danny LaRusso. All right, I am okay. sipping on the uh, the B five seventeen. Man, is that good? It's, it's all good. It is. It is. They really know what they're doing. Mm. I'm, I'm going to compare a little later. Boy, neat that burner. Mm. It's uh, good. One thing, barrel proof still carries the 12 year age statement. That's genius. Yep. And hopefully that, that stays. I think that's one of the deals with the uh, barrel proof is they want to keep it 12 years. Nice. You need to yell at your boys to turn off Fortnite. Why? I got. I, I had good speeds. Oh, uh, you're digitizing a little bit. Could be me. Who knows? Uh, Lewis Keen is tu is tuning in. I haven't seen him before. Lewis, welcome. He says this channel brought his attention to ECBP, uh, and thank you for that. I saw that. Yeah, we were. Uh, man, I tried it. Scott said you got to try this. I tried it. I mean, it was wow. It was like a five wower. <laughs> I was like, that was almost like a year and a half ago. I was like, wow. And then I was like trying to come up with another tasting note. And before I could think of anything, wow, it came out twice like that. And then it just kept going. That's Stephen Lang is here. He must not have been here last weekend. He says uh, there's an exclamation mark, but who's the bald guy? Yeah, I know. I didn't, even, didn't even lose a bet. I just decided it was time to shave her off again. It's been a while since I've done it. Did you say Cocktail Maven says, hey, boys, happy Sunday, you betcha. Cocktail Maven is going to be joining us next Saturday, July 7th, for our 12 Hours of Boom. Oh, yeah. In on the 12 Boom. That starts at tw or, uh, 10 a.m. Central Time and goes till 10 p.m. Central Time. Yeah. Cocktail Maven will be joining us at noon Central Time. She is sending us a pretty nice uh, care package with some good. Uh, she's she's hooking us up. We're gonna we some dandy uh, cocktails. We're gonna mix up. Bart. We're gonna yeah. We're gonna make it. We're gonna make it on the live show. She's gonna walk us through uh, making it out of her little kit, which is awesome. Let's just say there's a uh, burning pipe tobacco involved. What? <laughs> wow, that's gonna be a good show. Mm hmm. Whiskey cocktails. Woo, yeah. It's gonna that's gonna be fun. I don't that's I'm looking forward to that. Ah dang. It's good. Every time I sip that thing neat, it just reminds me I haven't added water yet. Yeah. That's why that's why I put this on my uh um top five bourbons for beginners. Yeah, that was a good call. They have to try, man. I that was before Whiskey Advocate even called it the whiskey of the year. I'm thinking that as much as this blew my mind with the wow, 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 wow. Yeah, okay, tell them to cut it back a little bit. But this is so good. I mean, I, I gotta tell you, this has really set the stand this this bottle of wow sets my bourbon standard. It really does. And that's not easy to do. I can't think of too many other drams of, of rye or, I mean, you know, I like the Pikesville, but I mean, it, I wouldn't say it sets the, the rye standard. Elijah Craig barrel proof. Boom. Hmm. Wow. Uh, Whis Whiskey Obsessed says he had some B517 Elijah Craig barrel proof a few nights ago, right after some Booker's 25th. Very nice. And very close in quality. Love some ECBP. I bet. Uh, Jared Gibbs is tuning in. He says, hey, guys, great choice of bourbon. Absolutely. Brian Schultz says, talk about a slick head. <laughs> and I've got a little bit of sun. I've been taking it easy, just like uh, 15, 20 minutes here and there at a time in the sun this week. Now, last weekend, I did spend some time outdoors, but I made the mistake. I put on too much sunscreen, and wow. so it didn't kick in at all. I'm picturing you covered in white zinc oxide. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like a giant Q-tip. Be like, look at me. I'll be like, hey, that's just supposed to be on your nose. Nope. Uh-uh. Full protection. 
The well, IL, I, IL Glocker is asking, did you guys ever try the C917, which we have right here? We have not. And that's the one that actually uh, Whiskey Advocate picked. Yes. And that's the one. Uh, we've got two of those. I've got to pay Scott like a, a bounty in order to get the other one over at the house. How much was it? It was like $32. Didn't you get a sale? On right. It? Yeah, uh -huh, that's it. <laughs> And I already drank your bottle then. If that's oh, 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 hey. Hey, I, don't make me grab that Balvenie Pete Week one you got in the back there. I'm covetous. They come in with a lighter Pete, but I like it. All right, I'm going to do a direct comparison. Left hand, left dummy is the, uh, is the A117. Mm-hmm. Mm. Woo. Hmm. Well, I wasn't picking up the high. I mean, they're very close ABV, but it, it feels a little more sparky. Wow. They're usually, they're usually pretty close. I mean, maybe there's a point difference between them. Ooh, that one dances on my tongue a little bit more, though. That cinnamon spark right on the front. Well, I put two good drops of water in mine, and it's um, it's Ooh. still high. But it's really helped bring out Ooh. some of the uh, some of the oak, some of the cinnamons. That is interesting. The uh, the uh, the B five seventeen is still at sixty two point one ABV. I don't know if it's because it's been open, but I don't get the same immediate zing on my tongue. Wow, that is something different. Hmm. Uh, Shimon is asking which heat week is it? And I just this literally just showed up here in town. I was running around yesterday. I found it. As far as I know, it's the latest release or the latest batch. I saw it in two different stores. 48.3%. Um, I don't know if that changes or not in their um, batches. Somewhere it did have, I believe this was a 2003 distilled. I do want to mention that the color on your C bottle of Elijah Craig looks lighter than the other one. Is that just an angle of lighting? I think that's just got to be the angle of lighting. Let me switch them up and see if it changes it. Yep, that did it. That did it. Sorry. All right. I was immediately thinking, wow, the color seems different. Hmm. My goodness. Uh, Eric Waite, I was just going to mention, he was just over in uh, Scotland, and now he says he was a while in London, so he was all over. He drank some 2015 Pappy. He drank that with Whiskey Wise, good choice, at Bill Roy's off Soho. That just is a great sentence, Sniper. Uh, it was very good, but there are many higher bourbons, yeah, I guarantee that, with higher ABV that are compa comparable, yeah. Everybody, I think people like to say the double P with a Y at the end. It just sounds, it feels good. Pape, Pape, <laughs> Pape, like that. I mean, it just feels good. Nobody's running around going, Elijah. I mean, it just, but Pappy rolls. I think that's that's the whole reason why it blew up. Well, howdy real quick. Q Reality is tuned in. Kunal Kana. And malted in Montreal, Swami is here with us. 22 catch 22. I got a story for you later, too. It's all about the Home Depot. The Dan Trout, RNA to DNA is here. And Home Depot, why you guys tell us later? Well, I could do it now, but it was better just to, it's just, it was just an obs observation. You know, I did, I was doing a lot of landscaping work yesterday and today yesterday and today and today was the culmination and i misjudged the number of uh of uh, uh mulch bags so i thought 50 would do i missed by four oh yeah so i ran back and got 10 just to make sure. But when I come back for that final shot, I'm not looking good. 50 bags have been depleted. And that's, you know, that's not all the work that's going on is just shucking. Right. Shucking bags. So, so I show up and I'm like, yeah, I pulled right up, knew right where I had to go for the 10 bags. Guy meets me right off the bat. How can I help you boss? 
I was like, boss, what is that? What's going on there? I'm like, well, misjudged. Probably need four more bags getting 10 so you don't see me again. I pay for the bags. He's like, I'll help you out, boss. Drops boss on me twice. Never seen this guy ever. I'm like, who is this dude? Why is he dropping boss on me like that? But he's just standing there waiting for me to pay. And I'm thinking, okay, no need to go load up. Or I mean, you don't have to, you know, who knows? Maybe I haven't paid. Maybe I won't pay for it or something. So we get done. We're walking out. I'm taking the shortcut boss. And he cuts through some little like flower trays. I'm like, damn, that's like a triple boss. What's this guy's, maybe this guy's going to be like a, a shucker of, of mulch. He's a mulch shucker. I don't know. Turns out boss was all show. We get out there and there's another couple there and he's like, Oh, you guys are waiting. And they're already loading. He's like, I was with this guy. I'm like, you ain't been doing nothing with this guy. So he goes over and talks to them while they're shucking. I think he put one bag in their truck. And meanwhile, I'm loading, which is fine. I don't care. I can load. No problem. But then he wanders over, grabs one bag, but he grabs the one I already moved that's already split open. You know how they break open and they're dropping stuff all over? Sure. Grabs that, throws it in. It, it's like a spray of, I don't know what it, what it would call. I don't know. It's just like barks everywhere. I'm like, whatever. I don't even probably need the 10 bags. And then he's like, all right, I think that's 10, boss. And I'm like, yep, good to go. He's about 10 steps away, turns back. Was one of those open? Yeah, not a big deal, dude. All right, boss. Hard work. Hard. I'm thinking, I just saw you shuck two bags. All that fluff and the boss thing, two bags is all you shucked. One for the other couple, one for me. I don't know. I just thought it was interesting. Probably Tom R just, Tom R just velvet Elvis you, and I was getting ready to do the same. Thank you. I was waiting that for was the velvet Elvis. You never even, it was like I caught you flat footed. I was wondering where that was going. I was like, this is the story. <laughs> it wrapped up. You know, I got, I, that's the story though. When do you go to Home Depot and the guy's all flash with the boss and the boss shucks two bags? I still wish I could come up with a better thing with the spray of the spray of the whole mulch. That's all I'm saying. Hey, my bourbon journey is tuning in. That's Scott. He's going to be joining us next weekend on the 12 Hours of Boom as well. Where did I get the Velvet Elvis? I'm looking for it. I was sure you were going to Velvet Elvis. Tom R. Velvet Elvis. Oh, there it is. With a, whoa, four exclamation points even. Wow, Tom R. just jumped in. He didn't like the whole, he didn't like the mulch story. Uh, 7 p.m. next Saturday night on the 7th for the 12 Hours of Boom. Uh, my bourbon journey will be joining us. And uh, we're going to be taking a look at an MGP release, mm. the Rossville Rossville Union. That's barrel the proof. Proof. Did, they send, did they send you the non-barrel proof as well? Yes. Good, because I was trying to, when I talked to them, I was trying to get both. By the way, uh, 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 Tom R. said I went down the deep down the rabbit hole. Scott, let them know that's nothing. That's nothing. Usually I have like a tangent in the middle of a story. What's funny is sometimes Bart talks for like 10 or 15 minutes, then he'll go, I lost you a long time ago, didn't I? Right. Yeah. Yep. One time at work, I literally like fell out of my chair while he was talking. <laughs> I passed out cold and he didn't even notice. Well, it was a good story. I just figured it out. I like Brian Schultz. He's got it. Boss three times. He, he just trace bossed me. Since we're talking 12 hours of boom, or we have a couple of times, let's look at, let's uh, talk 12 hours of boom. Cocktail Maven got uh, the boss. 11, so 10 o'clock uh, a.m. Central Time, just be Bart and I. Uh, recap the year a little bit. Uh, enjoy some Balvenie Ton, 1509 Batch 4. Give some stuff away. Uh, at 11 o'clock the next hour, Dan, or Daniel, uh, from the Whiskey Vault will be joining us. Hmm. Uh, drink is undecided there yet. Really? At noon central cocktail maven. She's sending uh, all the ingredients for a couple of cocktails. She's going to walk us through that. It's going to be nicknamed the boss. That's what the drink will be. At one o'clock, <laughs> uh, Glenn Fittick Tracy was going to join us. She had uh, some conflicts come up. Uh, she's hooked us up, hooked us up with Glenn Fittick Jennifer in California. Will she sing? and or tell bad jokes i will we will have to hash that out 
So that's right. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Uh, at two o'clock central time, McAllen Nicholas will be joining us. One of the McAllen, uh, well-known, big on Instagram, social media, uh, ambassadors will be joining us. That'll be a fun one. Well, and I'm hoping edition four shows up mm. before yeah. then, before next weekend here. It's out. It hasn't showed up here yet. If not, we will take a look at either edition one, two, or three. Got it. Uh, Scotch Trooper has joined us at three o'clock with an undecided drink. True. At four o'clock, a Canadian whiskey author, Davin de Kurgamo, will be joining us. And we'll, uh, I, get, I threw a few options at him for a drink. Uh, Let me guess, Canadian? It'll be a Canadian whiskey for sure. <laughs> That's right. We got a signed book from him. Uh, what you go with? I want, uh, too bad he can't hook us up with a, a lot 40 cash strength. We got a we got a signed book from him, Bart. That's the one that. that That's what I said. Yeah, oh. I said we we got a signed book from him. Oh, I thought you said you wanted a signed book from him. Oh no, no, too bad he can't hook us up with a lot forty cash strength because I want oh, yeah, more man. of that. Uh, at five o'clock Central Time, McCarthy's actually Clear Creek Distillery. Janine Rock will be joining us. She joined us this year for a live stream. She's coming back. Phenomenal. And I think we're going to take a look at their brandy. Hmm. They, really? they had a special one um, that their uh, law department would not let us discuss. Oh, yeah. Dang it. That's one of, you know, that's one of my dreams when you get something that the law department's mad about, but you yeah. got it anyway. <laughs> yeah, they'll be like, we're breaking a rule. I'm like, yes, yes, nobody's got this. We're not even supposed to be talking about it. Yes, yeah. That's, it's, well, that's what I want. I want to be getting in trouble. I want the law department mad at the dummies. At six o'clock, Whiskey Library DC will be joining us. They're in the DC area. They organize tastings there. Big on Instagram, social media. But the DC area has got a lot of whiskey lovers. They do. They do a lot of their own uh, special caskings. They buy uh, caskings from different distilleries. Did you see, uh, Cast Nation's got a brand new Sherry PX coming. No. Oh, yeah. Check your email. It's in a second fill, PX, but it's exclusive, I think, for 12 years. Uh, 7 o'clock, my Bert Scott, my bourbon journey will be joining us. We're taking a look at the MGP release of the Rossville Rye Barrel Strength. Boom. Eight, and then 8 o'clock at the end of the day, Dr. Rob Horovitz. He's got his own uh, podcast on YouTube. We'll talk about the effects of whiskey on the body and how good it is. Bam. I like the way you finish that sentence. We've got to end me and Bart. We have a special bottle for that. We are not putting that out yet. What it is. To, nope. To close I'm, it zipped. Out. I'm zipped. I'm zipped. I'm also trying to read the back of your sign there. Oh, that's still, that is not a dude. Yeah. I did not get a chance to change that up. So, and then our last show, nine o'clock, we'll be out by the fireplace. It'll just be Bart and I, cousin Shane, Shakes Pennington. We'll be singing some tunes. Right. And uh, we'll probably have a few drams out there with us again if, if uh, it harkens back to last year's. That's right. We may break out another. I got a feeling somebody's going to bring a six pack of Zima again. Just like last year, we, we, we ended up having a Zima. That sounds like that'll be uh, canon. Well, what's going to be what will be neat is, is uh, going out there at nine is dawn is just starting to or dusk is is setting in. Uh, it's still light out, but by the time 10, 10, 15 rolls around, it'll, you, the sun will have set and the fire will be going. It'll probably be a little bit warm, but it'll, it'll keep the mosquitoes away. Yeah. I was just thinking, is, yeah, is that, yeah, dusk. Okay. So, yeah, it'll be hot, I guess. Maybe even a Zima or two says 22 catch 22. Zima and burping. Tom R is a true fan. He remembers the the Zima causing the belch eruption from everybody there. I got to tell you, the Zima was actually pretty refreshing at the end of the day. Until belching began. Zima, was it 1996? Yeah, that was the whole point. There was this whole joke that uh, I would say you know, Scott would just – like back in the day before he got into whiskey, he drank and then he would pause and I'd always say Zima. 
Yeah, you always tease me, razz me about drinking Zima. So they just they brought it back last year, reintroduced it. We had to get it for yep. the twelve yep. hours boon. I think Whiskey Scout brought it in as a as a special live show uh, guest. Uh, Zima after peated scotch is great for the peat burps. That's true. Yeah, now you got a longer finish. <laughs> uh, Cousin Shane and Shakes will not be around though until a little bit later in the day. I don't think it's going to be like uh, three o'clock or so before they're able to join us. Got it. Well, uh, go back to the Elijah Craig barrel proof, Bart. Thoughts? New one, uh, the the A one one eight is pretty darn good. I mean, there's uh, it's Elijah Craig barrel proof. It's harking me back. It's strong. It's good. All the cinnamons, the the oak, the caramels. Yep, it's got all those things to it. It's just, I, I believe my my uh, B five seventeen has has uh, opened up or mellowed a little bit with the air that got to it, and it's actually a lot more brown sugar forward. And I think that's just because it's been open and sipped on a little bit. I'll show. And uh, boy, this uh, this brand new one, which I just popped open, it was letting the dram breathe a little bit. That uh, that A one eighteen was cinnamon spark on the tongue. It was like it was like a Fourth of a July explosion. So. Yeah, I'm cocktail picturing... cocktail Maven is a uh, volunteer and to sing. Sweet. So very nice. Good. We all know you don't want me singing. I'll do it on occasion, but it's not good. It's just <laughs> like it's kind of like a bunch of guys at a bar singing when I when I tune in. Oh, yeah, uh, Amy, Amy's pointing out in the 80s it would have been Boone's Farm. Yes. I remember Boone's Stra Farm. Strawberry Hill, baby. RNA to DNA says Elijah Craig question mark. What's I uh, showed up late. What you guys? Oh, okay. What you guys drinking? Yep. Elijah Craig. We're drinking Elijah Craig. We un, we just uncorked the uh, A118 and we're comparing it to the uh, B517. Scott's got a C117 there, but he hasn't opened it yet. I, I mean, I don't think there's going to be enough difference to uh, warrant opening it up. Maybe at a later time. Maybe that joins us by the fire. Yeah, that'd be good. I don't know. I don't want. I don't want my B uh, ECBP anywhere close to Shakes. <laughs> Shakes was about a quarter of the bottle gone, and he was like, "This stuff's strong." And I'm like, "Yeah, yeah." Go back to the acoustic guitar, and then a little bit while later, he's like, "I think I'm gonna need to lay down on the couch." I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, that's barrel proof, brother." He's like, "I'm not used to this." That was good, though. like having Shakes Pennington in the house. Uh, if anybody's seen it back here as well, just showed up. I was hunting yesterday. I found the, the Balvany 14-year peat week showed up. And uh, Stranahan's Colorado single malt whiskey That's cherry cool. gas showed up as well. So I had to, had to pick that one up. Love it. I still want to get a hold of their snowflakes sometime. Somebody needs to... Did we ever get a sample? I don't think we've gotten a sample of Snowflake. No. Everybody waits in line for it. That's like getting sa a sample of Pappy. <laughs> I guess. I people don't care that much. people hang on to that. True. Yeah, they wait in line. There's that the one guy that likes to be number one and shows up a week early or something, camps out. Yeah. So... Uh, just got home. Finally had a chance to tune in. This is Lochness. Cool. Uh, uh, Tom R says, I got a new compass box bottle as well. Not Delilah's yet. My old Delilah's is back there. Uh, the new Delilah should be showing up tomorrow, actually, matter of fact. Hmm. Did Dave get a hold of you? Dave Dvorak? No. Me. Okay. He could not get the one that, uh, that my brother was able to pick up at Benny's in Chicago. He seemed a little upset about that. He That's said, not the one he's talking about. Well, it was on the message I had because he the said muse, he couldn't. The Muse was the one he was going to get for us. Benny, that the one at Benny's is a Benny's release only, okay. the gold standard. All he said is that special bottle. So the only special bottle I could think of was that one. 
No, that's the muse that he's talking about. Got it. He said if it's in, he just kept saying the special bottle, and if it's in town, the distributor lied to him. And I was like, okay. So, all right. So he's talking about the muse, but then on the message, he said, yeah, I'll get the second edition of Delilah. So I was like, okay. I already I ordered it online as soon as I saw it because I didn't want to. We've had a last couple of releases. Uh, with Compass Box, I had a hard time getting around here. So when I saw it online, I just jumped on it real quick and ordered two. Oh, uh, Connor says Muse still on the shelves in Benny's. You want my brother to go by and get it? I don't think so. Okay. I actually, the, as far as I know, two bottles came into town. We got one, and I know where the second one is at, and it's still on the shelf here. Got it. Okay. I wanted because it, it's pricey. It's two seventy, oh. two eighty. Well, then, so Dave was justified in his anger. Yeah. <laughs> so. Mm -mm -mm. I did not know what he was talking about. His message just kept saying the special bottle that I asked for. And I'm saying. Well, why is he even, he usually messages me. I'm the one that buys the compass boxes from him. He usually messages me. He called me and left a message, man. Left a long voicemail. I'll let you listen to it. It was, it was somewhat entertaining. So, and I just, I, I, I caught it and I was like, well, what's this? And I went and listened and I'm thinking, well, what's the special bottle? So, well, the way he was able to come up with that, that uh, smoke, uh, what the smoke head, sometimes he gets some oddball stuff in. So yeah. I actually saw I saw some smoke head in town. Really? With the skull bottle? I want another one of those. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um I love that. It was just a week or two ago. I was running out. I hit some stores that I normally don't go to. Where was it? Now I'm gonna have to think. That was my buddy Bixby brought that as a as a welcoming gift when he spent the night here. Came from Regina, Saskatchewan. Uh, Amy is going by Benny's on the way home if we want anything. I think your brother took care of us there. Mm. Yeah, I think he got the one. I can't think of... You know, I don't know. Benny's has got some good stuff that they get bottled just for themselves, too. So, oh, you're popping out. What? I don't have you. If you, you are you there? Oh. Well, you're locked up visually. Can you? Well, you're cutting in and out on me. Uh, do you guys still got me? Bill Bixby? No, it wasn't Bill Bixby. Bixby's kind of his, uh, his board gamer name. Matt is his first name. Hey, you're kind of back or you're still jumping, but you're digitized. Yep, Scott's Scott is glitching. That's called Fortnite. Hey. I'll have to let my kids know I ain't going to kick them off their game. But from now on, I have tell them, nope, live stream at nine. <laughs> You're back now. I got you. Uh, Travis is asking, my Delilah's 25 should be here. I think it's supposed to be delivered tomorrow. James Humphreys, good call on the Bill Bixby. I forgot his name. That was Dr. Bixby, I think. Another Regina, Saskatchewan. Oh, Scotch are here. Look at that, Derek. Behorn Bjornson, very cool. Yeah, Matt Robertson, he's a big time board gamer and organized whiskey tastings around Saskatchewan and even down into the states. So you may know him. He's awesome. He told me this beautiful story. He was only a beer guy and he would do all these beer trades. And when he came in here, I told him I'd run him through a tasting. And uh, so he brought the smoke head and surprised me. And then I used uh, like Glen Kinchy and I can't remember what else, but I just ran him through a three bottle tasting. 
and this great story where his wife would uh, drive as far north in Saskatchewan as you can go in the middle of like July or August, then get a helicopter ride two hours deeper with a canoe. And then apparently you can canoe through all these rivers up there and you're in the middle of nowhere. And she would end every night by the fire with a bottle of scotch. And he usually didn't partake. After the tasting I ran him through here, he became a bigger scotch guy than her. What, Eric Gilbert? He spelled it wrong, Eric. I'm sure you didn't intend to spell it as boring games. I'm sure he did. No, that was a typo. Now that you say that, and Julia is here, where is Daniel? Daniel's not tuning in tonight. Hmm. That's the way he usually spells it. Uh, has Bart had any highly peated beers? No, I haven't. As a matter of fact, you can educate me. I'm not up on highly peated beers. There have been a few, and they're insanely good. Wow, does the smoke really translate, though? That would be my only question. And uh, congratulations out to our Canadian viewers. It is Ca Canada Day today. Really? Yep. Wow. I've seen a lot of posts on uh, social media today. Uh, do we have a live video planned for July 4th? No, we don't. So nope. we uh, July 7th, next Saturday, is the 12 hours of boom. Uh, we will not have our standard video release because uh, we do 12 separate shows on Saturday. And uh, close her out with a bang. Yeah. Big old boom. Woo, woo. Bart, yes. The smoke is there, and it is huge. Wow. There are none of the mark, none on the market right now. If one comes out, I'll send you a bottle. Wow. All right. Thank you, sir. That would be great. Um, happy Canada Day, says Six. Good job. What's up, Rob? Rob's in there. I got a lot of Canadians in here right now. I got a Canadian board game buddy. He does. Uh, he gets paid. Gets paid to do like teaching videos, but he lives way like as far Canadian east as you can go. He's in his own time zone, some kind of island. I don't even remember what it's called. Any Canadians know what that is? It's not Nova Scotia. It's even further than that. His name's Rob. I can hear fireworks going off outside, matter of fact, right now. Yeah, they've been popping them just because they don't know what they're going to do. That must be people here celebrating Canada Day. Yeah, that's it. They're like, hey, Canada. Canadians are so nice. Bart is data. Okay. Because I'm, I'm, I'm Jean-Luc Picard. Oh, gotcha. I'd be closer to Wharf. <laughs> <laughs> or Scotty. Oh, Scott, now you're in the wrong genre. You just left the next generation. You went back to uh, the original. Yeah, see, you're not into the Trek. I'm Trek and Star Wars. You're like new Trek and Star Wars. Wait a minute. Awaken is here. Marzipan. Hey, Marzipan. And then he, like, closes with Marzipan. Newfoundland. No, it wasn't Newfoundland. It was some weird island. I can't remember. P.E.I. So, Chewbacca. There you go. See, the sniper just sniped you with that one, jumping out of the whole genre. Part of you had uh, Argonaut Bastard. Oh, Lordy. That's mom calling. That's not even Argonaut. You better keep <laughs> your glasses on. That was mom calling. Arrogant. What? Arrogant Bastard. I like to, come on. I like to call it Argonaut. <laughs> 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 there, yeah. DH Phil's even calling you out. <laughs> or you not? <laughs> the hats, brother. I think there are. There's a whole army of Argonauts. And I'm sure they were bastards. Peter's Island? I don't know. Maybe it's Peter's Island. Uh, uh, this week, hopefully, we have before Saturday, the 12 hours of boom, we'll have a web page up, hopefully. Uh, with more details and ticket sales and hotel reservations. It's for Prince for 19th it is, and 20th. It is Prince Edward Island. It's in, Is that its own time zone? Wow. Cowbell for Rob. Thank you, Rob. And he hit the answer. 
Uh, but someone says, no, it is not. Argonaut buzzard. <laughs> All I know is he's in the furthest time zone you can get in Canada. And I remember checking it out when he mentioned it. And I was like, wow. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, October 19th and 20th, we are organizing our fifth anniversary uh, gathering. Yes. Here in Wichita, Kansas, we're going to have a uh, steak dinner and tasting on Friday night. We're still hashing out. That's going to be awesome. Tasting lined up. Saturday will be a hangout until five. And then after five, we'll have tickets for a supper, a barbecue, and then we have live music. We'll be hanging out doing some live streaming and stuff on Saturday night. And uh, we've got a block of rooms uh, reserved here at a motel that's walking distance to most of the stuff. Hotel, hotel, hotel. Sorry, hotel. I always say motel, hotel. It's a Drury Inn. You guys check it out online, or I know you can look at our page. We got to get some photos up. It's got a beautiful hangout area in the front. I've got it just about ready to go. I'm fine tuning it. So sweet. Uh, it'll have a, a link to the hotel with uh, the block of rooms on there, commercial pricing, uh, tickets to Friday night, and tickets to Saturday night for sale. My mom usually does not call that late at night. Hmm. Uh, I will probably still be bald in October, George. <laughs> I will be save, shaving it. He may sell like bald lotion rubs. Bourbon blind has to run. Got to run, guys. Phone's about to die. Everyone, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button on this live stream before you leave. Love you guys. Thanks, Bourbon Blind. Check out... Uh, their uh, web page, or their not web page, their YouTube channel. They just started up not too long ago. Bourbon Blind. Blind Bourbon. Do they do all their tasting blind? Yes. Good. Yep. Joseph and the Argonauts. I knew it. Jason, not Joseph. I don't know why that came in. Mark Brown is he's in for October. He's just waiting for us to post the registration information. Hopefully this week. Just stay tuned. Uh, of course, we'll let you know. And hopefully by Saturday during the 12 hours of boom, we'll have more details. Hopefully it'll be up and be ready to go. It's just about ready now. So mm. thank God you're on that. Julia wants to know if we will have a live stream for all those that can't make it in October. Oh. She doesn't have to worry about it because she will be here. Woo! But yeah, we are going to do probably more than two or three live streams. We'll have to see. We got a we got a good good connection at the barbecue joint. All things barbecue, they have more subs on their YouTube show by far than we do. We're going to do a collaboration with them eventually. Um. But at the restaurant, we don't know, so we'll have to see. That'll be a little trickier, maybe. But we'll see. We're going to have fun, too. So, But, yeah, you got to come. We're, we definitely are going to do some virtual stuff, but let's, let's, uh, let's get all together in a whiskey gathering and have a blast over a Friday, Saturday. Uh, Eric Wade is pointing out that tomorrow is Food Quig's birthday. For those of you that tuned in, don't know who Food Quig is, he's got his own YouTube show. Uh, his birthday is tomorrow. Eric says that he's on vacation and everyone should drop him a happy birthday wish on his latest video. So you just go into, uh, you actually, you can go into any of food quicks videos and leave a comment, and wish him happy birthday. And he should get the notification or at least the comment shows up that you, that you left it. How old is he now? Jared Gibbs is planning on being here in October too. He's like oh. 32, I think. Gibbs. No, uh, food quigs like 30. <laughs> uh, Jared Gibbs says he's planning on being here in October. Yeah. Wait, God, that's going to be fun, dude. You know how much fun that's going to be? Um, th there's a few people talking about George and, and Amy might make it back. Shimon might come. Woo. Woo. Um, bu -bu 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 I'm trying to think who else has uh, been shown interest. So, of course, we're t we've uh, a few of the other whiskey tubers have, have expressed interest as well. Yeah, we're nothing's finalized there. So well, we may just pull people on to a live show. It could be people even out of the audience, maybe. Yeah, the, the the I mean, we don't we're not bringing in enough money to fly people in, right? To pay for their visit yet. 
maybe in a few years. Well, that would be our hope. If this goes well and we've got 2,000 people showing up, hello, we'll have VIP guests coming in. We'll have the Duke showing up. Uh, Jason Coates is looking forward to October. Nothing interesting ever happens in Kansas, he says. That's about the truth. Mm. Um, really? Wyatt Earp? <laughs> See, I had to go back almost 200 years. Nothing interesting in Kansas. That's a good lead in. And then came the Scotch test dummies. Uh, Richie Z points out that's just the lighting. I moved those around earlier. You can see the difference in the colors. Yep. Yeah, I know. I brought that up earlier. Sorry. Ooh, OJ Fryer is going to be here. Sweet. He's in Oklahoma, so that's a short trip for him. Look at that. Yeah, we oh, had uh, Lana. Lana's usually tuning in. She's talking about coming back. Woo. Tampa. I introduced uh, actually new BTK and happened to introduce him to my stepdaughter. She reminds me of that all the time. But I do do do. Hey, well, Cocktail Maven's not too far off. She says she's just kidding, but where's Wichita? Yeah. It's right. It's smack dab, right? Almost well, almost smack dab in the middle. James Humphreys so wants to know if you're gonna if you're gonna strip, apparently. If Eric Waite was here, there would be strippers. <laughs> the sniper. That's how I got the name. Tom R. wants to make the trip. He needs to work on his vacation. He does. Timothy McVeigh, McVeigh worked in a convenience store. Really? I didn't remember that. Timothy yeah, McVeigh. He was from, yeah, he, well, he was from the area here, I know. and That's terrible. We, we might snap at any point. Hey, OJ for hire wants to meet up with Swami next month. I think he's coming through. It's July. I want to say 26th or 28th. He'll be in Oklahoma city. I'm planning on, at least I'm planning on swinging down there and meeting up with him. Bart. I don't know which, if you want to go or not, we're looking at I think it's Sunday. Yeah. He's doing the whole route 66 thing. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. As long as we can get down there. So a uh, Monday should, you said it's on a Monday or a Sunday. Sunday. I should be good. I should be good. You look at that. Jared Gibbs. Swami's coming to OKC. Yeah. He's driving. He's, he's brought a pair of ice skates with him, looking to skate in every city he goes to. It's a whole Canadian thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, DH Silv, too, says it's Bourbon Night has a review on King of Kentucky coming Friday. Wow. Cocktail Maven says after that Home Depot story, she started to wonder if you had snapped already. Yes. She hasn't been around me long enough yet. Yeah, I don't know. Boss. <laughs> it just struck me. Nobody goes around calling people boss anymore. I mean, and it was like repeated. Multiple that's times. Yeah, that's enough. We already heard the story. Oh, you know, my God. Enough. That's enough. You sure? Yeah. Look at that. Like the first time around. Velvet I, Elvis. Velvet I, Elvis. I keep hearing about you shaving your head. And blah, 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 blah. They can see your head, dude. You don't need to tell them about it. You know what, though? I say, yeah, I shave my head. That's, I don't go into a 10-minute diatribe about I it. I believe you use too strong of a sunblock. I heard enough, man. I heard enough. Uh, Richie Z wants to know if a review of uh, The Muse is in the works. <laughs> we would have to get a second bottle. Or a special occasion to open up the one uh, bottle we have. Yeah, he's a collector. I want two of my compass boxes, one to open and one to keep. Well, we uh, got that, that. That really, I, I, I love the compass box. You the, do. The bottle. You do. Yeah. Mr. Glazier did say we can visit him if we get into London. We can visit him at his office or laboratory. We got to get in there, man. We got to get in there. Mark Brown says Bart will be referred to as boss from now on. If apparently he likes it. I like the way you talk. I like the way you talk. That or Argonaut. All right. Well, Barto, shall we wrap her up? <laughs> yeah, I'm just I mean, thinking. Any other whiskey talk? Anything else you want to? No, no, no. But given the choice of arrogant, while I'm looking over at my far distant chat screen or Argonaut, 
And immediately Joseph and the Argonauts came to mind. Where the hell did that come from? That's all I want to say. You want to say something, your mouth keeps perking up. You keep puckering. No, I'm just looking at uh, comments. Everybody's trying to get me open. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Barto, look at that. Shimon, how does he know that's my nickname? Have you called me that on air before? Barto, yeah, all the time, I think. Okay, that was impressive. Uh, DH Silv2 says, I need to open the muse. I'm doing myself a disservice. I want some mustard with them biscuits, boss. God dang, <laughs> Matt. <laughs> Oh, that is funny. How did you work that in? Is that from Cool Hand Luke? I remember the egg eating. Night, Jared. Thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it while you was here. Barto and the Argonauts. Look at this. See, the show took a fun turn. I'm having a good time. Well, I, told, I don't know if uh, Shimon was here when we was talking about it. Shimon was checking his airline miles to see what he had as far as coming back in October. So Some call it a Kaiser blade. I call it a, I call it a sling blade. <laughs> uh, retail on the Muse here, I think, was 270. 280, 260, 270, 280. We better... Visit Mr. Glazier. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, DH Sill says he paid 265. Wow, 300 bucks I ever spent. Now, here's the deal that is one of those whiskeys you have to have different expectations for. And do you know why, Bart? No. It's a grain. It's all grain. It's a grain scotch. I so we, we had their well. The muse is this their second muse? No, it's the first. It's the hedonism. They do the right. special release. The hedonism is a grain whiskey. Okay. And all of the special releases that he's done are have been grain whiskeys. Grain whiskeys are lighter. Um, there's more almost kind of a tropical note to it. They're lighter. There's vanilla. Uh, you know, you don't get a lot of the heavy, you don't get the heavy, you know, ex bourbon barrel, single malt notes. You don't get the sherry. You don't, there's no peat. It's just a, a lighter grain whiskey. That's well aged. Um, I like, I love, I love the hedonism. I've loved, um, Oh, I'm trying to think what the, some of the other grain, whiskeys that we've done but i know oh there was at least one reviewer that was disappointed with the muse and i almost guarantee you that's because he had a different expectation or didn't realize this is a grain whiskey hmm. and well, i believe it's all like all, most of the scotches that are in the muse are at least th are in the 30s and i think there's even some 40 year old grain whiskeys that are in it. All right. Now they're double single. That's, that's, does that have a grain whiskey? It is, right? It's a single malt and it's a grain, right? That's it. Yep. Two whiskeys, double single. So right. double means two whiskeys, sing, one single malt, one single grain. <laughs> right. Right. It's the double single. And, I, and actually, when, when we had John on and we were popping open your circus and all that, um, I, you know, I was anticipating the circus, the double single blew me away, stood out. And then I went out and got my own. So, uh, it, it is one of my favorites and you've got a heck of a collection and, uh, and I really loved it. So there's just, it's very unique. Yeah. I, even the, the regular release, the hedonism, is, is all a green whiskey. I know Eric Wade is watching. He reviewed it and he didn't think that much of it. Really? But he did save $2,800 by shaving his head. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, DH Silf 2, 2 is saying the muse uh, from our show when we had uh, John Glazer on. Um, the youngest in the muse is 17 years old. A huge amount is 45, and over half of it is 30-plus years old. 
French fried potatoes. <laughs> We've gone into a whole sling blade. Uh, phenomenology is not just grain. It might have some grain in it. Oh, nope. It says blended malt scotch whiskey. I can see it from here on the phenomenology. Wow. Oh, oh, oh. We were getting feedback. But there was, um, there was, there's one mute or one hedonism that I don't have. I don't remember what it's called, but there's the Maximus, which is from, I want to say about 2007. I've got a bottle of it and it's older grain whiskeys as well. 30 and 40 years old. There was the Quint hedonism Quindecimus that came out uh, about three years ago, I believe. And then the muse now. Yeah. Don't pass on the double single there. So it's, it's really, really good. I mean, it's, it stood out and, uh, and I was surprised. I, I think even Scott, you were, I kept saying, Whoa, give me some more double single. And you're like, really? I'm like, yeah, that's, yeah, I know. You hit the hell out of my bottle. Oh, God, I was just tipping it. I didn't even manage to pour it into a glass. If you watched uh, yesterday's review of the Ardbeg Grooves, which is one of Bart's bottle, you'll see he pours me like a half of a ounce. Whatever. You don't even pour it from the bottle. You pour it into your glass and then pour <laughs> one from your glass. <laughs> well, I poured way too much. I don't know what I was thinking, and then I halved it. So, uh, DH Silv says he is not a citrus guy. Should he get it? Probably not. Then there is a lot of citrus, a lot of tropical, a lot of vanilla to the double single. Yeah, if he doesn't like it, if he doesn't like the citrus, was uh, that the one where I got a little bit of grapefruit? I don't remember. I'd have to go watch. I can't remember. Uh, do, 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 yeah, worth worth one forty. Yeah, I mean, I went and dropped it immediately. I liked it better than the circus. I liked it. It was the oh, best. Wolfhorn. No, he's talking. He's talking no name. Oh, I'm Just saying thoughts, it's still thoughts, on, thoughts on no name worth. Oh, one. Gotcha. sorry. I thought we were still talking about the double single. No, but the note is the no name. No name is very good though too, and worth one forty. Yes, I believe so. That's the peated one. Bullcorn, boy, you really lost control there for a second. Bullcorn better than the circus. <laughs> Double single better in the circus. Oh movie. hell yeah! Oh, hey. Hold on, hold, hold on. Let me get into your frame. Heckin, heckin, yeah, heckin, yeah. It's better. <laughs> Bullcorn, yeah. I I had the circus right there, and I was anticipating. I was even ready for it to be phenomenal. The artwork was great. The bottle's good, but the double single. I was like, whoa, what is this? I'm coming back to it. I remember in the live show, I mentioned that I like the double single best. And you're like, what? And I'm like, yeah, I'm just saying I like it. Uh, Derek Bjornsson is saying, nice to see the Dale Bach on display. Find Tucson Mesquite. That was just sent to us uh, from a super scotch god. Yep. Uh, he said we had to try it. Now, this is, I think it's the third batch, or well, batch DC 18 1. This is one that was aged in ex bourbon barrels. So I know, and he sent us a sample of batch two, which was a Madeira cask, I believe. Is that right? Mm, mm, mm. And it's a, it's an Arizona single malt. I've opened it up. I've tried it. Uh, very surprised. Very impressed. Yet another, you'll have to wait for the review on that. Another American single malt. Mm, yep. mm, mm -hmm. It doesn't say American single malt. It just says single malt. You keep coming up with this American single malt. Well, it's an American. Then, so, okay, on America, it is American single malt. I don't know what well, that means. In Arizona, am I wrong if I call it an American single malt? No, I'm not. Stranahan, Sherry Cask. A few <laughs> questions coming in about that. Uh, it just showed up here. This is batch five. Uh, first time I've seen it, it was $70 range. Uh, I cracked it open last night and was very impressed with it. Hmm. So, you have to wait for a review for more. You got a little aggressive there. It's bald head. <laughs> <laughs> You're always like, oh, single malt, American single malt. You, I don't you, know what that means. Went, I need a went, definition. You went all breaking bad on me there for a second. When? Right there. It got a little scary. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
Yeah. Wow. Now it's probably time. We're at 9.58. I like to run it for a full hour. Uh, Santa Cruzin is asking, what's the ABV on which one, Santa Cruzin? I bet you it's the He devil. must have tuned in late. I don't think I've been seeing Santa Cruzin commenting. No, no. He's just, he was lurking. Oh, and uh, Shimon Nussbaum. Yeah, Shimon's asking, what about the general, Scott? Must have been when we were talking about oh. you were saying the double single is better than all kinds of stuff. Well, everybody loved the general, but I don't know. We were early on in our whiskey adventures then. Maybe. It, yeah, it took, uh, the general is pretty darn good, but it took me a while to realize it. Let's put it yeah. that way. I hadn't yeah. had it for quite a while. I went back and was very impressed with it. Well, it's so old that, that it's very wood oak influenced. Um, Real Police Talk <laughs> is tuning in. Howdy, guys. Scott is the one who knocks. <laughs> Oh, look at that. I'm with the boss. American single mall. Boo, Mr. Bill. Mr. Oh, Bill. Oh, Mr. Bill. <laughs> <laughs> There's a couple like 20-something people are like, why are they doing that funny voice right there? What's Why are they doing that? <laughs> uh, Pikesville rye. Yeah, we've had Pikesville oh, rye. Love it. Rated That's it. 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 That's a very good uh, rye. Yeah, it was number one, not to ruin it, in, my, uh, in our 16 blind rye shootout. Uh, Santa Cruz is the, the what's the ABV on the Del Bach? Uh, this is the distiller's cut cast strength, sixty point two five percent ABV. Wow! Awaken dummies or anyone who? What's three good food spots in Wichita? Also, nice towns nearby within an hour from uh, Wichita. Well, I mean, you can go to Derby if you want a town nearby. Um. Andover's got some nice stuff, but restaurants. What's that? Uh, Bite Me Barbecue right off of Douglas and St. Francis, right? And then uh, that that place right across the street from it is a uh, distillery. And boy, did they have some great food in there. It's brand new, but it was awesome. I can't remember the name of it. Also right across from Bite Me Barbecue. Douglas what about Bella Luna? Do you want to bring up Bella Luna? <laughs> uh, for the, a long time. the old number six, baby. The old number six, a big old hot burrito. Scott likes to talk about his burrito. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, um, well, it depends on how much you want to spend, what kind of food you want. Bella Luna is a, a Mediterranean slash Greek um, restaurant. Very good, very fresh. Everything is delicious on their menu. One of our favorite spots. No, Bella Luna is good. Yeah. Um, 12 restaurant 12 it's clear out west on the west side maple and 119th is very good um there's the east side of town has all of the uh, several of the richie um chester's chop house is out there a lot of people go there if you got money well it's got well scotch and sirloin where we're going to have our tasting at it's on kellogg uh very well established uh, been here a long time great place to eat well here it is right here it's uh, uh norton's brewing company uh check them out they've got a decent whiskey selection wonderful beer it's a brewery it's they're right in there with their their mash tanks and everything and they had some really really good food in there and that is douglas and saint francis right across from bite me barbecue who has some of the best ribs in kansas so so you've been to one time on yeah. the lunch the other day, and all of a sudden it's like top three restaurant in Wichita. They had a hangover burger that was to die for. Jalapenos, <laughs> pepper jack, cheese. They threw something else hot in there. And then they put on like some kind of hot sauce, and I was like, damn, that's good. And they had a really good whiskey selection. The uh, the guy is the – he was the head brewer – at um oh shoot what's the name of the brewery that's down in old town that's been there forever and i'm blanking on the name of it uh the wichita brewery no 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 you can go in there and get growlers and just walk out of there the brewery on this it's got two floors right across from heroes i thought that was the wichita brewery well it's changed name a couple times i can't remember but either way he got out of there and he went and opened this place with his wife it's it's really good. Their appetizers, everything they brought to the table was 
phenomenal. So let's wrap it up. I think it's time. Got it. We're losing viewers left and right. Okay. All right. <laughs> Anything called a hangover burger is good. All uh, right. Elijah Craig, barrel proof. We were, well, Bart had uh, B517 and compared it to A118, which I had 65.3%. It's delicious. Carries on the Elijah Craig. Oh, someone asked earlier how often this comes out. This is a regular release. It's in their core range. They, re they only release it three times a year, though. And kind of, it's kind of a limited bottling and a core release as well, because it, it is in their core range. Uh, like I say, three times a year it comes out. It is highly sought after, but if you're looking, you can usually find it. And it's one of the best bourbons out there. Yes. I've probably said too much about the hangover burger already. <laughs> So, so this one was uh, Joseph and the Argonauts, the Hangover Burger, and the what we should say is the the spray of mulch. Bart is boss, and the boss baby, the boss. <laughs> scotch it, you Scotch gods. Salancha, gummies. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Tuned in. Boom. Good show. Look at that. Scott's going to go out and murder somebody.